Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to all of you guys out there. Today, I'm going to share with you with a different view of the reinforced concrete design. We normally face a failure of the structure after we already finished constructed it and we feel or face the failure condition due to some accidental or any natural disaster and so on. But sometimes we forget. When we do a design calculation, there is a, some failure will be avoided. Therefore, in my presentation today, in my sharing session today, I'm going to share with you what are the common failure in reinforced concrete beam design based on design calculation? What are the solutions that we can take in order for us to make sure that our design calculation is not fail? And after we construct the structure and the structure can sustain for the design life that we propose for the structure. Here is the first types of failure that we normally face, the bending failure. The bending failure is under ultimate limit state design when we already calculate the maximum load and maximum shear force of the beam. So we will design the structure by providing the area of the reinforcement provided. Okay, based on the design reinforcement, normally we will face this failure when the area that we provide for the beam for the reinforcement is more than area of the maximum. For example, the provided is 3,500 and then the maximum is only 3,200. This is occurs, okay, when the section capacity that we provide for the structure is insufficient where the beam with BW is small with a beam span L is too long. Therefore, the AS maximum that we apply is lesser than AS provided. Okay, because the formula for AS maximum is 0.04 B times with the H. Therefore, the B and also the H control the capacity of the structure. So what we have to do in order for us to avoid these types of failure when you do a calculation, no need for us to do the redesign, redesign of the structure. So here is my suggestion. The first one, we can increase the width of the beam BW at the initial stage when we're going to determine the initial dimension of the beam. Okay, for example, at the early stage, we already provide the initial is 125 millimeter. Therefore, when we face this kind of situation, we may increase to 25 millimeter due to its common practice of dimension used in a beam design from 125 to 150, 175, 200, and so on. Okay, so by increasing this BW, we can increase the maximum area of the reinforcement required or provided. Okay. Second one, we can increase the height of the beam. By increasing the beam height, the effective depth will increase and reduce the area of the tension reinforcement required. Therefore, it will ensure the area of tension provided is less than the maximum area of tension reinforcement. Because sometimes we cannot change the section after we do a design, but we have to do so if we face this kind of situation. Why I said here, it will ensure the area of the tension provided is less than the maximum area of the tension reinforcement. Because when we would like to Calculate the AS provided or area of detention provided formula is equal to M over 0 0.87 FYKZ. Therefore, Z parameter will control by the D. D is the effective depth. So in order for us to calculate the effective depth, it's reflect to the height of the beam, which is H. D is equal to H minus C nominal minus diameter link minus diameter bar over 2. That's why by increasing the height of the beam, we will increase the effective depth. Then the moment divided by the 0 0.87 FYKZ will produce the smaller area reinforcement required. Then we will provide the smaller area of the tension provided. The third one, we can increase the characteristic strength of the concrete FCK. 
for example, at the early stage, we uh, assume or we are planning to provide F using uh, FCK is 25. But after we design, the structure is failed. Then the solution is we can increase the FCK from 25 to 30 Newton per millimeter square. By increasing the FCK, it will reflect the K value. K is equal to M over FCK BD squared. So how it will reflect the K value? So if we increase the FCK value, therefore it will reduce K value. When the K result is less than K balance 0 0.167, therefore the beam structure will be singly reinforced. Normally, the area of the singly reinforced is much more smaller compared to doubly reinforced because the, we only design the tension reinforcement. We are not designed both uh, bottom and also top reinforcement. Okay, we only provide the minimum area of the reinforcement at the top as a hanger bar. So here is the section of the beam where we can manipulate the BW and also H. So when you do an initial sizing of the beam dimension, you should know how to determine the accurate size of the BW and also H that we normally apply where BW is actually 0 0.4 of your H. Okay. Next one is shear failure. Shear failure is occurring when the maximum shear force VED that we get from the shear force diagram is less than the maximum shear resistance VRD max after we use the new theta by using the formula given here. We have to remember when we get the VED is more than VRD max, we have to de design the shear reinforcement. The first theta that we have to use is 22 degree. After we use 22 degree, we get the VED is less than VRD max. We have to change the theta into 45 degree. Then the same things happen again. We have to calculate the new theta. But at the end, after you change from 22 degree to 45 degree and then the new theta, but you still get the condition is still same, therefore, the structure is failed due to the shear. So we have to redesign the section. Okay, so these kinds of things has happened, same as what I do already told you before, the section is insufficient capacity for shear maximum. So what we have to do, here is my solution. The first one, in order to produce the beam is not filled in shear, the maximum shear force VED or VMAC should be bigger than maximum shear resistance VRD max. We have to make sure this condition occur. Therefore, the first one, we can control the parameter that reflect to the shear, which is beam dimension, so that the maximum shear resistance is less than design shear force. So the Beam dimension here is your BW and also H. You have to control your BW and also H in order for us to make sure that the maximum shear force should be bigger than your maximum shear resistance. Second one, you may provide the beam configuration with maximum length and well supported so that it produces maximum shear force and maximum capacity. So for example here, it is important for you when you would like to prepare your structural plan, you have to identify the specific length of the beam, length of each span. Okay, so you have to make sure the length of each span is sufficient and also better to have a maximum length. And also you will provide the maximum capacity of the beam so that you will not redesign or you should after you face the failure, you have to add additional reinforcement, uh, additional beam here in order for you to reduce the span of the beam. So the beam should be supported, okay, at different, different length. For example, so in my case here, I have one, two, three, four support here. So you have to make sure 
the beam is well supported so that it has a sufficient capacity. The third type of failure is deflection failure of the beam. So this figure shows how this beam is failed due to deflection when it more than the allowable deflection. So this is how it happened, where the deflection is failed if L over the actual is more than L over the allowable because the deflection failure is caused by the beam section size is not proportionate with the length between the beam span L and the height of the beam H. Sometimes because of the beam is too long, the size of the beam is too small, that's why the beam can be failed due to the deflection. What we have to do in order for us to make sure that our beam that we designed is not failed due to deflection. Here is my suggestion. It's based on my experience. My suggestion is the first one we, we may reduce the beam span L by adding column in between so that it will reduce the actual span over depth ratio of the beam. So from these two support column here into three support column here. So it will reduce the length of the beam. So from this to this. Therefore, it will if the actual deflection is smaller than before. Second one, increase the beam height, which is H. By increase the beam height, it will reduce the actual span over depth ratio, L over D. So if, for example, we cannot decrease the beam span length, we may increase the height. So by increasing the height, so we'll increase the effective depth, D. In the same time, we will reduce also the L over D actual. So I hope that you understand on this. The third one, to increase the allowable span over depth ratio so that it will more than actual span over depth ratio. The designer is allowed to control the area of reinforcement required parameter. For example, FCK and also the M maximum at the early initial stage when we would like to design. So we have to make sure determine the right FCK for the beam that we're going to design or the structure that we're going to design. Either we would like to use FCK 25, 30, 35 and 40 Newton per millimeter square. So it should follow the standard and the purpose of the building that we're going to design so that it proportionate to the size or dimension of the structure. Then we have to determine the right element that will contribute to the action so that we will control the M maximum. So if we determine the M maximum correctly, absolutely, we will have the design correctly. Okay, so you have to be careful on this. Sometimes we have a wrong determination in terms of the load or action that we apply to the structure. So, for example, when we have a brick wall, we have to time with the height if we, we, we use a unit width, for example, 2.6 kilonewton per meter square. Sometimes there is a mistake that my student normally face. Here, they use, for example, from a different reference, so the the unit weight of the uh, brick wall, for example, is 2.5 kN per meter square for 102.5 millimeter thickness of the brick wall. But in the real situation, the size of the brick wall is 115 millimeter. So you should understand a different size of brick wall will give a different size of unit weight. So the, automatically, when you use a wrong parameter in your initial size determination of the load, absolutely your moment or your action that you apply to the load is wrong. So be careful, guys. The next types of failure is a crack failure. So here is the figure show to you the crack failure. So the cracking of the beam will fail if the Minimum spacing is more than actual spacing and the actual spacing is more than allowable spacing. 
when we talk about reinforced concrete design as theoretical part, so the crack failure is due to the spacing between the reinforcement. So we have to make sure the spacing between the reinforcement is between the minimum and also maximum allowable value. So if it not fulfill that requirement, therefore your beam will fail due to the crack. Okay, the failure in cracking of the beam is due to the spacing between the reinforcement bar is less than the minimum requirement and also maximum allowable. The minimum requirement of spacing is equal to maximum aggregate size normally 20 to 25 millimeter. In my case, what I normally practice here, the S minimum is 25 millimeter so that my actual should be more than 25 millimeter. So what we have to do in order for us to avoid this crack failure. So we should have in mind, okay, before we start our design, we can imagine how it's looked in terms of arrangement of the reinforcement. Okay, either we would like to have one spacing or two spacing because it will reflect the process when we do a design. Either we would like to have much numbers of the reinforcement or less numbers of the reinforcement so that it will relate from the bending, shear, deflection, and also crack. Here is my suggestion how to solve this problem. The first one, we can increase the width of beam VW so that it will increase the main reinforcement of the spacing. Second one, rearrange the reinforcement to reduce the reinforcement spacing numbers. Example, from two spacing to one spacing as what I show here. So in this figure, okay, it shows two spacing between the reinforcement here. Then I change into one spacing here. Okay, but we have to make sure that when we want to provide less numbers of the reinforcement, it will complement the idea to reduce the reinforcement spacing. But in control of the area should be bigger than the area of the reinforcement required and less than the area of the reinforcement maximum. So this is the requirement that we have to know. So basically in overall, so when we would like to design a structure, we at the early initial stage of the design, we have to determine each of the parameter that we are going to use for the structure. So we should have a lead assumption, a lead determination of each parameter that we would like to use correctly. Okay, so please remember that. So please do check every specification that we are going to use in your design so that it will make sure that the bending, the shear, the deflection, and crack is passed. So I hope that this setting session will really help you guys in order for you to understand reinforced concrete design of the beam and to understand the common failure of the reinforced concrete beam. So with that, thank you. Assalamualaikum.